All right, continuing along with our Facebook chatbot series. And in this one, we're going to cover creating the chatbot for the client's website. So we're going to build out the, the core chatbot. And we're also going to add that little chat help bubble onto the client's website. All right, so let's go over to ClickUp. I'm just kind of stay organized here. All right, so I've got this task here, create Facebook master chatbot. And we're going to create the, uh, the core chatbot. So let me just back up here. All right, so in order to do this, I'm gonna go into Smart Engage. And uh, even before that, I just wanna point out that we have this link here, which when you open it up, will take you to some pre-made chatbot templates. So depending on your client and who you're going after, you may want to look at this list and see if there's anything similar and request that you get access to one of these. So if you had, you know, a ballroom dancing client, you would, you know, request access uh, by following these steps here. You just create the ticket here and request access to one of these. And uh, you can use that as your starting point template. It makes things a lot easier to, uh, to start from a template. Um, so for this particular client, let me just close that out. Um, the painting client. So we've got color bright painting of Long Island. And I've already actually uh, imported a template that was very close. So this would be like your starting point. And I guess, let me just say this. If let's say that you go through this list and it doesn't match your client, it's still worth picking something similar because it gives you an idea as to how to structure the bot because it's all really similar um, at the end of the day. It's just uh, minor things are gonna be different, but for the most part, the core structure and the way the bot is laid out is, is pretty similar from one to the next, right? So um, pick something similar as a starting point. Um, I think I used uh, home, home Improvement for this particular one. All right, so I'll close that. And so here I am, I've got my templates in this template section. So when you import, it's gonna say imported like that. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just gonna call this color bright main templates. I'm just gonna stay organized like this. And I'm going to drag this into it. I'm gonna open it up. Then I'm gonna rename this by clicking on those dots, rename. And I'm going to call this main chatbot. And let's rename it. And now when I open it up, um, I was uh, starting to work on it. So normally you see a preview here, but I was editing it. So uh, it's not published yet. So if I click edit, now we'll see all of uh, this stuff here. Um, at any point, um, if you want to test the bot, you can click this preview button and it will send a, uh, a preview test directly to you as the page admin. So it's a nice way to just kind of, uh, you know, make sure you're, you're tracking where you want to be. So uh, let's just get right into it. I'm just going to do a live build here for Colorbright. So I'm going to pull up the Colorbright website. It's going to help me out. And I've got a placeholder here for the logo. It's the first thing. This is the welcome message. So after they... Uh, the very first thing they'll see after interacting with our little chat bubble once we put it on the website is going to be this welcome message. So they're going to see the logo for the business. It's going to say welcome to, and it's going to use the name of the page, which is the name of the avatar. So it's going to say welcome to Color Bright Painting of Long Island, comma, and then it's going to use the user's first name. All right, so it's a personalized experience. So I'm going to get the logo. Let me just save that image. It right. doesn't really matter what the file name is. There's not any real SEO or SEO aspect to this in any way. So let's grab that. So we've got the logo there now, very simple. And then you can see we've got a delay block here. So that's just this right here. And by clicking on one of these, it adds it into the live editor and I can just delete it out. Uh, but typing basically means the bot is going to simulate like it's typing to you. So it creates a interactive kind of engagement process where it looks like it's actually in the process of typing. All right. 
And then we give the user three options here. We say tap an option below to get started. We have view services, about us, contact us. If I click on one of these, it brings us into another message. So about us takes us to the about us message. And you can see which message each one takes you to. Contact us takes us to contact us part one. All right, uh, so let's just start from the beginning. So we're gonna go to view services and you can either access where this goes by clicking from the, uh, the attached message section by clicking on main menu, or you can just click through here, which confirms that you know the exact flow. So you can click view services and then click main menu. All right, so now I know this is the main menu. Give it a second for images to load. Or if I want to go back to the welcome message and I want to click main menu directly like that, it's the same exact thing. All right. Uh, so what we're showcasing in this first message is the services. And this is for another client. Um, so cabinet refinishing does not apply to color bright painting. So the first thing you want to do is kind of decide how to use these services. I always like to use the image carousel, which is a gallery. Um, so we use this and then you can, from the user's front end, they can uh, side scroll through by swiping right and left, which is nice. Um, so what we can do is just start, uh, first we want to look at the website and decide what services we're going to include here. So if I click on services, you can see that we're focusing on painting. Um, we've got exterior services, pressure washing, uh, metal finishing. So there's lots of things here. Let me look at their port portfolio because that might dictate what I want to focus on as well. Uh, let's see projects. All right, so let me look at the before and after. That might be worth maybe uh, using instead. Before and after is usually pretty nice. If I can, uh, I might have to like screenshot this. Let me see if it'll let me save it. Yeah, so I may have to actually just screenshot it. I'm just kind of getting a, a strategy together to think of how what I'm going to do here. Let's look at interior services. All right, so these are some good pictures to show off the painting of interior. Let's see the exterior. All right, so these are good too. All right, I'm probably just gonna focus the core bot on their painting of interior and exterior services. Um, I may put in the FAQ, but the answers are fairly long, so I may just use a link to this page. Let me look at their uh, estimate page. All right, so pretty generic. All right, so let me go back over to interior services. And we pull up the bot here. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. Let me first start out by just kind of renaming these. So I'm gonna go with interior painting. All right, let me go to the next one. And I'm going to do exterior painting. Okay, and then I'm going to have pressure washing. Uh, let me go back over here. Let's just see something. Uh, I could do staining also. I may do staining. Uh, let me just refer to, let me check their services again. Just give me one second here. I'm pulling up. Uh, some of their info, uh, information. Interior painting. All right. Cedar restoration was another one of their terms. I'm just pulling up their old submitted file here. So interior painting, exterior painting, 
pressure washing and cedar, cedar restoration. So I'll probably use that since those are obviously where they're focusing on. That's probably where most of their business is coming from. All right, so let's go cedar restoration. All right, and that's going to, let me get rid of this arrow because this is where it's going to end. Scroll back. Uh, so I have extras in here from the last chat bot uh, for this other company. So I don't need roofing, so I'm just going to delete that one. All right, and then work my way through. Pressure washing, cedar. Whoops, I did added another one back, so I have to delete that. All right, so we have exterior. Whoops, let me see. Okay, so we've got interior painting, exterior painting, pressure washing, and cedar restoration. Okay, good. Um, so now let's, let's go to the first one. Let's make sure these images match up to what we're saying here. So we've got interior painting. So what do we do? Let's look for a good image, image related to that. It can be, you, know, you may want to use a before and after. You could use just one from interior services. Let me take a look here. All right, so I'm not seeing anything good on the before and after that I want to use, but maybe under interior. So you just want to pick something that captures what you're trying to show. This is a nice one here. So I'm going to save that image. All right, and then go back over to Smart Engage and we just click on the existing image and then we find the new one and we use that. And then if you want to use a more um, widescreen image that's not as, uh, doesn't have as much height, you can use this. But I generally like to use the second version here, which gives you a, a bigger uh, picture to work with in, the, in, the, in terms of height. All right, so that's our interior painting picture. That's a nice one. All right, let's go next, and we're gonna look at exterior. So let's go over here. Um, so let's find one that looks good here. You know, for this, I may want to use a before and after because I did notice they had a good one. So let's see, probably could use this one right here. Um, so let's capture it like this. And I'm just going to click on print screen, or you could also use, I use this little plugin here called Fireshot, and then we can capture a selection. And I come here, and I just do this, and now that captures this image. I can right click, copy it, and I can go into paint, or any image editing program really, Oops. Uh, let's see here. Bring it over, paste it. And, you know, we can even write some text on here to clarify before. Probably want to increase that size a bit. You want to change the font maybe it makes sense to do that I'm probably just going to leave it in a uh, dark red now let's do the same thing here after okay Good, and then let's just do a save as. We'll call this one exterior. Put it in the right folder. Uh, where was it? Pictures. Yeah, right here. And I close that out. 
Close this out. And let's select the right image. Exterior. All right, so we've got that one. Next, we need pressure washing. I don't think they had any images of this, unfortunately. Um, so what I'm, I know I, we uploaded them to their Google My Business. So let's just do that. All right, so we got images. And this is just, these are just the folders we were working on before. So we've got, here it is, the pressure washing images. Um, so maybe this one here I'll use. All right, let me just go into Smart Engage and find it. All right, so we've got, Images, all right, so pressure washing. And this is a nice one. This one's pretty good. Uh, let's use this one. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we've got that. And then we wanna do cedar restoration. So I'll do the same thing. Let's go right into this folder here. And we have a bunch of images we can use. Uh, so you just want to pick something that stands out, looks good. I was going to pick this one, but I don't really like the dimensions of it. I want to pick something more in landscape mode. Uh, something like this actually is pretty good. So I'll pick this one. Yeah, I like that. All right, so our images are set. And I'm happy with that. So interior, exterior pressure washing, and cedar restoration. Okay, uh, next thing we wanna do is check our buttons here. So on each one, we have three buttons. This is the most we can add uh, with Facebook Messenger right now. Um, so this first one is get a free estimate. And this takes us into a quote form, which is right here. So you can take it off and if you need to locate a form that's there you just click select existing step and you find that one so now it's connected to the quote form all right so if i click on the quote form we can change this up a little bit if we want to um, based on the business so this one asks if the pressure or if the project is for a residential job or a commercial job and based on what they select actually this will um, tag them automatically into a custom field called job type. If you need to create a new custom field, you can just start typing one here from scratch like that and then add it by clicking to add it there, but I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna keep it, keep it as job type. Uh, so right off the bat, we're going to tag them if this is a residential or commercial job. And then we have a brief summary um, where they can describe what the uh, project is about. Sometimes the customer wants to provide more details. Uh, and the way we're adding this is just a user input block. These are all user input blocks. When you add a user input block, you are prefacing their response by something like, um, what is the name of your business, right? I mean, you would never ask a client that obviously it doesn't really make sense, but now this is what they, on their end, they're going to, they're going to read this. And then the response they type, we save it and we store it. All right. So that's what we're doing right now. We're saving their responses. So I'm just going to delete that one. All right. So this is a user input block where we're getting multiple choice answer. It's either residential or commercial, depending on what they select. We're going to store that and save it. Um, and then we're going to ask them for a little more information about the project. And then we're going to save that as a project description. Okay. And then we're going to say, okay, great. Just tap on your email address below. So when they tap their email address, um, we actually are able to store it. And the beauty with Facebook messenger is that, um, it will actually pre-populate the email address to the viewer. If you're not familiar with that, it will, um, actually use the Facebook email address and they just have to tap it or they can enter a new one if it's not the one they want to use. So we do that, we store their email address and then we also add a tag and that will come into play a little bit later. Uh, we add the tag completed underscore contact underscore info. And then we ask them to tap on their phone number. 
Um, we don't need to save that to a custom field. We can leave that as is because we save this natively now. All right, so we save their phone number for the client uh, or for the customer rather. And then we say, thank you, whatever your name is, first name. Uh, someone from our office will be in touch with you ASAP. And I usually like to add this bit here. Um, if you need to get in touch with us immediately, please call us at, and then we'll get that phone number. Uh, let me go back to Color Bright Painting. Please call us at here. Let me copy that, bring it over. And I'm gonna change those dots to dashes. or by tapping the call now button below. All right, so we actually will use this button again, but this time we're going to use it instead of to another message, it's going to be able to call a number. All right, so I like to put in a phone emoji there first. And I do call now. Uh, if you need to find, this is my most recent ones, but if you need to find an emoji, you can go through here. I believe the phone is under I think this bell icon, yeah, it's right here. Um, so that's how you add that. And then you click on call number. And this is where we put in that phone number. But again, just use the numbers, get rid of those dots. And uh, country code first, so plus one for the USA. 631-242-1534, click done. So when the user taps on that button, it will actually ask to dial that number directly. So that's nice. All right, so that is a good quote form. Um, you can add more and more to this if you want. You can ask them to, um, you know, if they have a date for their project, that could be, you know, usually that's covered in a brief summary. People will usually spill their guts on this and tell you everything you need to know. And then we store that um, as project description. And again, this these custom fields and stuff, we're gonna, we're going to discuss that a bit later, but right now the important thing is just to capture this information. All right. Uh, so, and then main menu, we always give them a way to loop back to the beginning of the bot. So main menu goes to main menu. All right. And that just takes us right back here. All right. So at this point we've done get free estimate and, and uh, just make sure that each button is pointing to the right one. I mean, the template already had it, had this. So when we, end, when we edit this quote form, it means that the universal quote form here um, is tied to all these buttons that we created already. So we only have to edit the quote form once, right? So all of these get free estimates are good now. The next thing we wanna do is update the customer reviews link. All right, so uh, under customer reviews, if we click on customer reviews, it's gonna take us into this section, which is down here. Um, and actually, for some reason, it, it's not showing. So your messages that are attached are here and then unattached means it's not connected to anything. Uh, I think it just got a small little glitch with that. So I'm just going to disconnect it and then select existing step and select customer reviews again. Okay, so now all of our messages are attached. Good. So let's click on customer reviews. And this was the prior business. So I'm just going to change this a bit and I'm just going to say color bright painting. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to say uh, color bright painting of Long Island. Let's use the smaller, the you know, smaller version of their brand. Not a big deal. All right. So color bright painting always guarantees your satisfaction. Um, I'm not super familiar with their accreditation. Let me just see if they have anything worth putting under there for the for that part of the bot. Um, let me put this here. So I'm gonna delete this one. And I don't really like this review. It's just one review for this 
template. Usually what we do, I'm going to show you in a second. So first I'm going to have this text block because I want to put in this bit of information, but I'm going to put it after that three seconds. So you just drag it around like that. So it's going to say this. Three seconds later, it's going to show typing. Uh, it's going to show typing for three seconds rather. Then it's going to spit this out. And I'm also going to say here, well, we only have one review for this client right now. Um, please check out, or let me see. Here is just one of our many satisfied customers below. Here is just one of our, here's just one review of our many satisfied customers below. And then I'm going to use a card. Uh, let's get rid of that delay. Actually, I'm just going to delete it. And for this, I'm going to go back to um, marketing kit. We saved that image. Um, if you recall, see if it's where I put it. Um, I think I put it under pictures. Color bright. Yeah, so we got the one review. So usually that's what I like to do is I use the marketing kit review images and we stack them here. And ideally you have more than one. So usually I do four. So I'll add the plus and then you see how that adds another one here. And that way you can, they can swipe through all the reviews. Um, since we only have one though, just delete that. So now we're left with just this one card here, and that's fine. So we need to enter a title. So we've got this little warning up here that we need to enter a title, right? So um, you can put anything you want here. I usually just put some stars just to kind of highlight it a bit more. So I put five stars, one, two, three, four, five. And if we had more cards, I would say scroll forward. So I usually do something like scroll, uh, scroll right or scroll forward, right? And then I put an arrow. Um, see where the arrows are over here. Um, so maybe something like that. And then on the last card, you do it the other way. So you have, you know, the back arrow. So, but in this case, I don't have anything uh, required for that. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it. Then I usually like to add a button here for just call now with the uh, phone number. So click on that and then delete this. I put the phone icon in and just says call now, right? And we use the call number button option. And let me just go over, make sure you get the right phone number here. All right, so let's copy this and then paste that in. Let's get rid of the periods in between. So we just have the numbers. All right, and then done. And then we always wanna have a way to get back to the main menu and just to maybe fill out a quote. So we can leave the contact us button, make sure that goes to the right message and it does. Uh, main menu, should go to main menu, but not sure why this icon got put there. So I'm gonna get rid of that one and change it for this one here. I like to use this one that says top. All right, so we've got, just look at this right now. Okay, so we just have the one review and that's, that's fine for now. As we get more, we can add more like I showed you with, uh, by adding the cards. For now, let's just go back to the main menu and let's just look through here. So all of this looks good. All these cards are correctly showing what we want. And just make sure I have the number updated for all of these. I think I did. Uh, actually, no, I didn't. So we need to update the phone number here for all of these. So you can see I've got this old phone number and I still have it in my clipboard I can paste. So let me just change this phone number for all of them. 
copy this one that doesn't have the periods. All right, and then update it there. All right, so that's card one. Let's go to the second card. Let's update this one. All right, that's card two. Update this one. Card three. And one more. Last card there, perfect. All right, so that is good. Um, all right, so I'm happy with all of that in the main menu. So let's go back to the welcome message. All right, so we've got that, view services, which is also the main menu. Let's go to the about us section. All right, so um, in order to complete this, you usually just go to the website, look at what they already have for the about us section, and try to highlight some of that stuff. All right, uh, so family business is good. Might just take these first two sentences here, copy them, bring it over, paste that here. Uh, I might just remove this image. I don't know if we have anything that's worth having. Actually, that's not bad. I'm gonna save this image here. And I'm gonna replace it. And then I'm going to put that same text to give it some context. Uh, let me see. I just think I'll put it above here. And if they have a team here, if they have like people they want to show, um, what I would normally do if we if we have that listed, they don't. But if they did. I would have uh, a button here, usually at the end, like the last text, whatever it is, and it would say meet the team. So I would just do something like meet the team, right? And then this would go to a new message flow completely. Um, in this case, we're not doing that, but um, that's one way you can do that. Uh, what I will do though is put a contact us option and all that will do is just go to an existing step of contact us part one. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the, the regular contact us, this is really more appropriately the, uh, the get quote option. Just kind of give it that a little more uh, specifics. All right, so we've got the about us section pretty standard. And then again, of course, we allow them to get back to the main menu easily. So they can contact us, they can go to the main menu. Let's go back to the main menu and look. All right. Uh, so what else do we have here? This goes to that part. All right, so all of this looks pretty good. Um, let me see if there's anything we're missing. Just kind of double checking everything right now. Make sure this phone number is correct. Yes, good. Um, what I am going to do actually, and let me just check something here. All right, so this is the email address one. So instead of for email using comp uh, completed contact info, I'm gonna change that to the phone number. Um, I used to do it so that we would um, just worry about getting their email address and then uh, use that tag and that tag will come into play in a little bit uh, a little bit later but I just do for the phone number now because a lot of the companies we work with I mean they like the emails but they really just prefer to get that phone number more than anything and they're in almost all cases if someone's entering their email address they're following it right up with their phone number as well um, so what I'm going to do is just move this tag so right now I'm in the phone number user input section right so if you click here I can see all of these options. And then under additional actions, I'm gonna click this button, add a tag. And if you don't have this tag, you can just type it and then it'll show you how to click it and add it. So if I had new tag and I click this right here, it will add that new tag, right? But I already have this existing tag. So I'm just going to select it, completed contact info. All right, uh, and then you can just click off and it's saved. Uh, so you'll notice this saves automatically as you're going. 
You have to publish it when you're done to make sure it's live though. So it's going to save this for you as you go. But um, as far as testing it, you're going to have to click publish to actually see it. Um, so let me do this actually. Um, I'm gonna pull up my phone. Let me see if I can connect it real quick on my other monitor and then drag it over. Just give me a second here. I'm trying to find this app. All right, so this is my phone. Just kind of bring this over. This is my phone right here. So let me do this. I'm going to publish this. Let's just look at the beginning. And I'm going to click preview and then I'm going to pull up my, my phone so you can see that. So I just clicked preview. All right, it's the first time I'm doing it. So I have to approve it. Um, if you've done it already for this avatar in the past, when you click preview, it'll just go. But since it's the first time, I have to actually click this button to connect it. All right, so that's gonna go, I have to continue. All right, and now, let's see. All right, so the preview message was sent. All right, so there it pops up on my phone. Now we can just kind of test it out here. So you see how the logo is kind of like cut off? Um, we can fix that and I'll show you that here in a little bit. Um, so it's always good to test these things. If you click on it, it shows it fine. But in terms of the little preview pane here, it's not, it's not the best. So usually what you have to do is take this image and then crop white space around it. Like I said, I'll show you that, but let's just go through the, uh, the bot right now. So I'm going to click on view services. You can see how it pulls up the quick test and I text. And I just realized that I have a capital I here. So let me just change that to a lowercase I. I mean, it still works the same, but it just aesthetically, I didn't like the way that looked. All right, so you can see, oh, let me put my phone back up. All right, so you can see we clicked on uh, view services here and then it says, take a look at our available services below. And we have interior painting, I can swipe right. We have exterior painting, uh, pressure washing, and cedar restoration, right? So what I would do is just start testing some of these things. So I'm going to test the call us button and you can see how it pops up that phone number there. So you want to test that, make sure that that is the correct phone number. It would be embarrassing if you had another business here, right? Uh, then we can test customer reviews. Copyright painting always guarantees your satisfaction. See the little bubbles there. looks like it's typing to you. And then we have this review card right here. And if we had more, we could swipe right and left. Obviously we don't. Let me see the call now button. Good. All right. Uh, we can do, let's go to contact us. All right. Uh, so actually I want to change that because I want that to go to contact us one. So let me go back to reviews. Change that existing step, contact us part one. That's what I wanna do. So we publish that. All right, so, uh, well, let's just run through this. So this is essentially what we're doing right now. Now let me pull my screen back up here. Uh, so this is really related to contact us part one, which is, uh, or sorry, contact us, which is also part of the quote, the get free quote option. So let's just go through it. So it's for a, uh, we'll say residential job. All right. And then the bot continues, enter a brief summary about what work you need done and click send, uh, let's say house. People usually provide a lot more detail than that, obviously. And then, uh, we're just going to get the next prompt and you can see how it automatically has displayed my email address there it just kind of pops up. That's my registered Facebook email address. In rare cases, it, it's a Facebook issue and it doesn't show it's very rare, but, uh, that's why I always have this bit of text here, which says, um, you know, if you need to enter a better one, please do so now and click send. So they don't 
get stuck. So if they either don't see it or they want to enter a different email address, they can just type that in manually and then they can click send. A lot of people are just going to tap that though, like I just did now. And then once they tap it, that continues the, the message. And now we see our phone number as well. So we can do the same thing here. We can tap our phone number. And while we're doing this, um, it's going to add me as a, you know, adds me as a subscriber with this email address. It uh, inserts this phone number as I tap it into my subscriber profile. Right. And then we just say, you know, thank you. And then we'll use the first name, Daniel. Someone from our office will be in touch with you ASAP if you need to get in touch with us immediately. So they can either tap that link right there automatically to call or they can use this call now button if they want to or they can just be done. And we added this tag up here for the phone number. So at this point, and we'll set this up, this contact information is going to get emailed to the owner. So they get very excited when they see these leads coming in because we call the, the subject something like a smart chatbot lead. Um, so they love it. Uh, so let me just, uh, let me do this. Let me go back over to subscribers real quick, pull that up and let's look at what we got here. So you can see it automatically just started filling out, uh, this profile for me. So I've got my email address, um, connected to Facebook messenger. It has my phone number, right? Um, we also have this tag here for completed contact info. Okay. So that would trigger uh, a new automation that I'm going to show you how to set up in the next video. Uh, and so let's just continue with the bot actually just to, just to make sure that we're happy with the rest of the flows. Um, let me pull that back up. All right. So main menu. All right. Uh, so all looks good here. You know what I could do? We have uh, some limited options here on the main menu, really. So if they want to go to about us, we should probably give them that option. And I realize I have hours of operation kind of floating around out here, not doing anything. And we do need to finish the hours of operation. So let's go to about us. And let's put in hours of operation right here. All right, so you see how we actually went over the character limit, it went to negative three. So we don't want to do that. We have to stay within those boundaries. So now we've got two left. So that's good hours of operation. I'm going to select an existing step since we already have it and then select hours of operation. So when I click through, it takes me here. All right, uh, but that those are not the office hours. Let's look at what the office hours are. I'm just going to quickly pull up um, I can find it real fast I'm just looking for that schema file inside of this client make sure this is the one that's actually filled out yeah all right so here it is if you recall the schema file we've completed so we've got Monday Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right, so it's Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then we've got Saturday. We put these, uh, put this colon here. Saturday is 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. So keep the same format, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And Sunday, I'm just going to put closed. All right, so we're good with that. And so that's now accessible on the About Us page. And what, we, what do we need to do? We need to put the About Us section somewhere on this main menu area and I'm going to just put it here as a quick reply just so it's a, an option down here if they really want to see it and I'm just going to select an existing step and select about us and then publish and what else do we want to do sometimes I like to put in an FAQ here um,
we also need to actually test contact us part one because we did not see this message go through for contact directly. Let's see what we have here. Please give us a call. Okay, so this was just a placeholder. We actually need to fix that. That's why it's important to go through every aspect of this, at least before going live. You may have the business owner monitoring their Facebook page at this time because they're going to see these messages that you're that you're sending to yourself. Essentially, they, you know, you can just let them know ahead of time that we'll be running some tests and not to be alarmed. All right, so let's just make that the proper format. And change this out for the right number. Okay, good. So let's still, the other question was just the FAQ. So we have an FAQ here. Um, if it's only a few questions and they're not long, sometimes I just put it in the bot directly, but since these have bunch of different ones and they're fairly long answers. I usually would just copy this FAQ URL and I will include it inside of the bot somehow, right? Um, so maybe I'll put it here. You can put an emoji here. I usually use the question mark one. It's a pretty good one. And It'll just be this. I don't know if you saw that. So this option here, open website, and then paste that website. Done. So we've got it visible there from the beginning. Uh, let's see. All right. So this is the welcome message. I'll leave that. Main menu. I may put it on the main menu here, right underneath. So for a quick reply, you can click the icon image and then do it that way. And then you just click in the box and put and start typing. So we've got FAQ there and we're going to select the existing step and actually no, would not be an existing step. Um, yeah, cause you can't use a quick reply as a website link. So that was a mistake on my part. So I just delete this one then. And I will put it at the end of a free estimate and the end of the contact us, because that's usually where people have their questions. Uh, so on the about us possibly as well. So I can put that here. Let's do FAQ, link for the website right there. All right, uh, contact us. This is the quote one. Put it here. And where else should we put it? Right here at the end of the quote. Or no, all right. Uh, so this is probably a good spot to put it as well, because sometimes before they even contact us, they may have just some generic questions they need answered that the, the FAQ could handle. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, why don't they just go to the website? You'd be surprised how, let's say lazy, but yeah, lazy people are, they just don't want to, they want to be spoon fed a lot of times and they like interacting with these bots. Um, you, you know, so you'd be surprised how often they'd rather just go through the bot than actually navigate the website. Uh, I won't put it there. I won't put it on hours of operation. And that looks good. All right, so I think everything looks good there. We publish this. All right, so we have an issue. Let's see, all right, so the phone number's good. FAQ, okay, for whatever reason, didn't have the website there, so let me make sure I have that. All right. And that's saved and now we can publish it. All right. And now we're good. So we have that validation is to make sure that everything is proper. We don't have a broken bot. All right. So let's do it again. Let's preview this message again and just kind of roll through it. Um, so I'll click preview and pull up my phone and you can see how it starts again. And I still need to fix that logo, but I just wanted to go through everything here. So let's check about us.
Okay. All right, so it's got that. We are a proud member of that, good. So if I click on FAQ, you can see how it opens up this website and it just opens up their, their actual website. And we can just go through this way. It's actually still a really good user experience. All right, so let's just go back. Let's look at hours of operation. All right, that looks good. And then it would take us back to main menu. All right, I think we checked all this stuff. Uh, here we did the free estimate. Let's go back and check about us again. I want to see something. So if I go to contact us, all right, are you looking to contact us directly? Uh, let's just say directly. All right, so we have the option just to call them and we also can get to the FAQ and we test the call now button, looks fine. If I go to view FAQ, it pulls up the website again, good. Let's go back, oops. Back to the main menu. All right, this looks really good. Um, so what I am going to do is fix that logo real quick. Um, so let me find that initial image. Just give me a second, I'm on my other monitor looking for that folder. Right. So was this it? Doesn't look. I guess that is it. All right. So let me open this up. I'm just gonna open it with paint, keeping this really like very basic. And I'm just going to expand this. Let me select all. And I'm gonna drag this over. And really, I think I can get away with something like this. And you could be a lot more precise than this. I'm just kind of showing you how easy and basic this can be. You don't have to get too crazy with it. So you see how I just basically put a border around all the sides here. Um, that's all it takes. And then I'm just going to save this as, I'm just going to call it Colorbright Logo 2. Save. That's fine. I'm going to minimize it in case I need to work with it again. And then let's go back to the welcome message. Let's change that out to CB2. All right, so you see how it kind of like gave us that border now? So let's publish this. And then let's preview it because I want to see that this looks good. So I'm previewing it. Pull my phone up. All right, much better. So now we can see the entire logo. It's a little bit smaller, so you can kind of play with that a little bit if you aren't happy with the exact size, but overall, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see the entire logo. So that's just a little kind of trick you have to do sometimes with the way Facebook Messenger formats these things. Um, so yeah, make sure you do a very thorough test of the bot. And when you're finished, make sure you click publish. Don't be afraid to do a bunch of previews and test it out. Test the, the contact form. Make sure that when you view yourself as a subscriber, you see that that tag is being added at the end. Once that phone number is tapped on, um, you know, confirm the, the email is being added. This is a no, this is obviously going to happen because you're already typing on messenger and then make sure you get the phone number, right? And that's all part of, uh, the testing you should be running. And then, uh, the only thing to, to really mention here again is if you have more cards for customer reviews, you would just add those here. You know, so you just click the plus icon and you'd have more cards. And then in the subtitle, you would just give that, give that some context by saying, you know, scroll, scroll right, swipe right. And then the last one you can, you can stay, uh, you can say, you know, go back or swipe left, whatever it may be. Uh, what else? 
And then for the About Us, like I said, you can get in more detail here. If they have team members, you know, meet the team. That's always a good one where you have a profile image of someone. And if I have a profile image of someone, you know, you can either just do the image of them or you can use the cards as well. So, you know, you can use the card and use their image here like that. You put their name here. So it could be, you know, Dan Anton. And then the subtitle here could be their job, um, you know, manager, whatever it may be. Um, but that's usually a good, uh, good use of these cards when you're doing like a team like that. All right, so other than that, everything looks good for this bot. So I think we're pretty happy with it. Um, so the initial welcome message is that they'll only, they're only gonna see this the very first time they interact with the bot. After that, the only way they can get back to it, the way we built it, is just by clicking uh, main menu. So anytime they click, if they're, if they're on any part of the bot inside of the attached messages, main menu is the only way that takes them back through. And this is your core main menu portion here because there's no sense in welcome, welcoming them again uh, into color bright painting you know it's just it's an unnecessary uh, step right and uh, all right so that is it for building out the bot like I said make sure you check with any templates that we already have um, with our support desk inside of uh, smart engage support and you know there's something usually pretty close so even if it doesn't match you exactly pick something close and use it as a starting point even if you don't use it it could be a reference for you that you pull up on another screen as you build on the other one just to kind of see and get ideas that always helps all right so lastly make sure you publish it and then uh, in the next video we're going to connect this all on the website and set up set up some uh, other cool automation stuff for it all right i'll see you in the next video guys